Final game in the Six Nations, folks, sees France getting a win over England in a game which was kind of fitting uh, for a final game. Five lead changes by my count. Uh, goes down to the death. England came back from a pretty decent deficit to get themselves in the lead a few times. But yeah, we'll go through some key events and some stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts. And then I'm going to go have a nap because it's now almost 11 o'clock in the morning. And I've been up since just after three. Um, weird game that it has a false start. Like the, Ramos took the kickoff 10 seconds early. He thought the ref had told him to go. But no, he said, I'm giving you a 10 second warning. You always see something different every time you watch the game of rugby. So that was something a bit new. Uh, the players kept going for quite a while before they realized the game hadn't actually started yet. But yeah, France, big old malls early on, was getting a few meters from their own 22 as well. And uh, unfortunately for England, Furbank went off injured really early on within like seven minutes. So Smith had to come on for him. But good news for England is they got the first points on the board after Ford knocked over a penalty on 11 minutes. He had his kicking boots on today, which was pleasing because he was a little bit scattergun a week ago. 3-0. Ramos gets three back after Marshall wins a penalty at the breakdown. So 3-3. Um, and then, yeah. First try of the game is maybe more the France that we've been used to seeing under Galtier, which has been missing... A little bit in the early periods of the Six Nations. Like it comes from a stolen line out. I think it's Francois Cross who pinches the or knocks back the um, the English throw. Uh, Fiku gets himself around Henry Slade into a weak gap. And then uh, Barre, the fullback in his second test, tears down the right wing. We dummy. And they're back onto the other side to Ligarek who's running the support line as he should be. 10 points to 3. France... Go in front, thing of beauty try. Proper, proper stuff. Nice kind of counter-attacking or turnover ball try. Um, Barre did, though, not long later, miss like the wicked bounce of uh, Alex Mitchell, a little dink through, which kind of fooled him, but he touched it. So it was England ball in France's territory, but he got away with it because England missed their chance. They, I think Mitchell like chucked it loosely not long later, so nothing really doing there. And it gets a bit kind of helter-skelter, like Smith's forced to chase one back. Over his own goal line from a kick through, Peno almost had a golden opportunity where he would have been in an offside position, but the kick that was going to go over his head had been touched by an England player, so suddenly he's onside, but he couldn't quite handle it. Uh, Antonio put a strip in on a toje, which doesn't happen that often, so it was really kind of back and forth, but no changes into the score until the 31st minute when France knocked over another penalty to make it 13-3, and then England being offside a few minutes later made it 16-3, so 16-3... The game is really starting to get away from England. And you got guys like Miafu, the big lock. He's taking names. He bumps off Earl like he's not there. He bumps off Itoje like he's not there. It's uh, very, very encouraging signs from the French side. However, England had a great end to the half and a great start to the half. Um, chance before halftime, five meter line out for England. They maul it. They get advantage. They go again. They maul it. This time it gets sacked. And you're wondering, do England have a nice move in them if they spin it? It may not have been planned. But Mitchell to Slade to Lawrence, boom, far through the gap. And suddenly, like that lead, which has been getting away from them, uh, you know, 16 unanswered points. That's only 16-10 only at half time. Very much, very much in the game. Run meters has been 289 to 122 to France, position 56-44. To France, territory 51-49 to England, so much of a much as in clean breaks, 4-2 to France. Uh, second half, England, though, continue that hot form, like I mentioned. It's uh, Ben Earl going close. I feel like he could have probably reached out to score himself, but he's always looking for the pass. Uh, and, um, yeah, they get it to Lawrence like a, a minute later. So, Kraken starts at the half. Lawrence with a quick-fire double conversion, and England are in the lead. 17-16, so what's that, the second lead change of the match? Almost another a minute later, when Freeman went down the right wing, but his offload got pinched by Flamont. But it didn't matter because they got one not long later through Marcus Smith anyway. It's a line-out. Ben Earl just lines up Thomas Ramos and goes past them. It's a bit of a turnstile one, sadly, for Ramos, but Earl has been a heck of a ball carrier. And, um, yeah, Smith's able to finish it off. So 24-16. Where's this England side been for much of the first half? But better late than never. They're in front. 
France need to get their way back into the game, but England's defense looking pretty solid. Ramos misses a touch finder, which is a kind of let off. You're wondering, can they get some momentum? Well, they can, and the crowd's getting behind them. 55 minutes, it comes. It's Barre with the score. Big carries from your big names in this French pack. I mean, like, Flamont had a big carry offered to Olive on against the final pass. Fiku had a big carry in the build-up. So, yeah, 23-24, one-point game. And then you got one of my favorite moments of the game, which probably won't be on any of the highlights packages. Joe Marler, standing next to the ruck, gets called off it by the ref. He's looking at the ref like, what? What have I done? The ref's just telling him, you know, don't, don't touch it. So one prop on another. Sebastian Telfelfinder <laughs> just comes in and cleans him out. And uh, yeah, he's just got the biggest smile on his face. Telfelfinder and then Marla just gives him a nice prop on prop pat on the head. I think he could uh, he could appreciate that one. It was unnecessary. But yeah, um, it was funny. I think Marla could see could see the uh, the amusing side of it after he probably could feel his ribs again. Um, but yeah, France, 59 minutes. It's another kind of crazy French try. It's literally one that's not been planned because it's a line out, which nobody catches, but Ramos just runs up ahead and hoofs it. So he doesn't catch it with his hands. He hoofs it with his foot. Peno chases hard, which is, you know, what top players do. They chase everything. He gathers it and gets it to Fiku. So 30 points to 24. France are back in front after having that, um, you know, patch where they were were really behind. England had all the momentum. They have arrested the momentum and they're taking it back. So 30 points to 24. They've got all the momentum. What can they do? Freeman gets a penalty against them for a deliberate knock-on. Ramos has got a chance to, uh, to extend that lead, but he pushes it wide. It's the one kick that he misses which gives England that kind of chance to, uh, you know, potentially just sneak back in. And they do, man. Don Brandt wins a penalty at the breakdown. He's come on from the bench, gives them a good field position. Etoje wins the line out. Wide ball, forward tip pass. I think it's Smith. And then to Freeman, who gets his first test try in the corner. 31 points to 30 with the conversion. Not many, not many minutes to go. It looks like England have done enough. But with very little time left on the clock, Ben Earl, and I thought it was Underhill, but he'd already been subbed. Ben Earl gets pinged for a no arms tackle. So Ramos has got a tough ish kick, but he's got a good boot and he kicks it 33 31. All they have to do is catch the kickoff, run the clock down. It is what they do. So they get the win 33 31. Pretty good game. Pretty good game. Um, Stats-wise, I don't think either side will be that happy with some of the defensive numbers. Like, both sides' tackle percentage is lower than what we're accustomed to. 81% for France, 79 for England. So, a touch on the low side. Uh, run meters, 452 to 293 to France. But clean breaks are 7 apiece. Offloads, 10 by France, 2 by England. There's a little bit of a stylistic difference. But um, France edged the position, edged the territory. England, a few too many penalties conceded 5-10, to 10, but, jeez, they were close. Um, some standouts, Barre, 101 meters, one clean break, seven defenders beaten, a try and a try assist. Not bad one for your second test match. Pinot, three clean breaks, 10 defenders beaten, and a try assist. Pretty nuts. Freeman, three clean breaks, three defenders beaten, 73 meters, gets himself on the board. Well done, young man. Ben Earl, 19 out of 20 tackles, even if he is pinged for that no-arms tackle. So, yeah. Good way to end the Six Nations with a proper bit of entertainment. I will not spoil the other results in case you guys haven't seen them. But yeah, that's it for the Six Nations. We'll still be doing uh, some kind of top five players. Going to have one more uh, guest on, one more of the former players. It's an Englishman, uh, which will be an interesting one. And um, team of the week, team of the tournament, all that kind of jazz. It's coming. Um, I think England are coming here to New Zealand in July, which will be interesting. And the French, I believe, have a trip to Argentina. So those matches will also be kind of fascinating. I'm sure Fabian Galtier will send a pretty experimental side. If you've appreciated or watched along with any of the videos throughout the Six Nations and you're still watching now, do me a favor and subscribe. If you haven't liked the video, chuck a like on it. Leave us a comment. I'll probably reply to some of them. I try to spend a bit of time replying to the comments. If you haven't noticed, um, check out my other channel, Two Cents on Tour. That's it.
I'm going to go to bed. A bit knackered, but nah, it's been good. It's been really good. You guys take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.